early morning, soon sunrise, um, and the sea is pretty rough at the moment. And it's been uh, like this the whole night, really. And we have another 24 hours to go, just about. have this massive swell coming in from the Atlantic from a big uh, low pressure system just uh, south of Iceland and then we have the wind the wind waves coming from the opposite direction meeting that swell so the waves get quite confused We thought we had stored everything so well in the boat, but these waves just made a big mess. I've been taking care of Vera and she has been, uh, she has just wanted to be very close all the time to me and it's been so hard to move around. This morning we've spent in the bed, in our bedroom, uh, reading books and uh, listening to some stories, watching some videos. And I think we're about uh, 20 kilometers from land. So I wonder when we will start to see some coastline here. Uh, we have the two other Swedish boats behind us. Uh, one is aiming for uh, La Coruña, but uh, us and um, the other boat, we will try to go to Muros, uh, which is just around Cape Finisterre. We are more on the west coast, with which which will make it much easier when, we, when we're heading south here now. And the boat Josephine, they actually managed to get a little bit of reception on the cell phone a little while ago and they could see on the, on the map for the orcas that they have actually now changed their position. And they have this like uh, traffic light, so green, yellow and red, depending on the area. Now it's actually red outside of La Coruña and uh, now I don't, I don't know if it's green or yellow uh, further down the coast uh, around C Cape Finisterre. So no matter where we go, all of us, we will pass outside La Coruña because this is the course we have. So we'll see what happens. It takes a lot 
lot of effort just to move in the boat. So, to just go to the bathroom takes a lot of effort. Johan is a trooper and decided to cook a pasta bolognese on a 20 to 30 degrees heel. Pretty confused seas at the moment. The wind has died down a bit, but the waves are still there. And now, when we have altered course, we also have the waves on the quarter, so it makes the boat really rock back and forth. And uh, we only have 55 nautical miles left on this course before we can change. I guess really hope that the waves will come, calm down a bit. Yeah. Everything in the boat was gets thrown around and yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the wind is going to pick up tonight. I also managed to uh, get a fresh uh, weather forecast. Uh, so it looks like we will have uh, 28, maybe 30 knots of wind uh, when we pass uh, Cape Finisterre. Uh, but the waves are coming down, and I guess that's because this swell that we have on top of the wind waves will slowly die down. Right now we're only sailing with the Genoa. Uh, I've rolled up the mainsail. And the reason for that is because the waves were rocking the boat so much and we're straight downwind right now. Uh, so the best solution if we were going any long distance in this course would have been to go wing on wing to put up the whisker pole but since uh, the boat is rocking as it, as it is right now I don't want to put up the whisker pole it's the head out of them And the boat we're traveling with, Star, and the other Swedish boat, they just hit something, or something hit them, they don't know. Uh, they have lost uh, the prop, uh, they think, and the prop shaft is bent, and they suspect that they might have lost the rudder as well. Um, they are 9.5 nautical miles behind us, and uh, yeah. They're going to call uh, Pan Pan now to request uh, assistance, uh, a tow into uh, a marina. We're just outside a place called the uh, Mushia or Camarinas. There's actually two harbors. Um, and if they can't uh, get any help, uh, we will uh, turn around and see if we can uh, give them a tow. Pan, pan. 
stations, all stations, all stations. This is sailing vessel star, sailing vessel star, sailing vessel star, Sierra Foxtrot 8570. We have been attacked by killer whales and our engine has stopped working and we are drifting to a land. Sailing vessel star, this is emergency minister, please switch to channel 11, channel 11, over. Understood, uh, we will send you a uh, search and rescue boat. Please, can you confirm how many crew uh, people on board? Over? Uh, four people on board, uh, two adults and two children. Understood, two adults uh, and two children. And are the ways uh, still near this position? Over? Uh, not that we have seen, no. Uh, uh, just one hit, that's all. Salamara Taib getting to your position and the ETA half an hour from now, 30 minutes from now. Copy that. Over. It's half past 12, so the boat will be at their position around 1 o'clock. And uh, my guess is that they will have at least two to three hours of towing before, before they are in. Uh, uh, marina. So we will uh, head into the bay here uh, between Moshia and Camar Camarinas and we will be uh, standby if they need our help. Yeah and also we don't want to be in this area anymore because if this part of Orcas is traveling this way it's only nine nautical miles and that's not very far for our Orca to travel so um, I think it's best to leave this area and go into port now. We have uh, five and a half nautical miles into the marina. In about five minutes we will be in the meeting oh, point uh, in order that? to give you one giving it. line and then you will find the towing line, okay? What you have to do is take the giving line on board, you will find the towing line and may pass on port on the starboard side. And also uh, we are going to tow you to Marina's port. It's about uh, one hour from your position. Shop it is. Do you understand over? Yeah, they have left So we we go to the Marinas. So This is what we all feared for getting attacked of these orca pogs. Unbelievable that it happened to Star, and I feel so bad for them. And uh, waking up in, in the middle of the night and with their kids, we can see on the AIS now that the rescue boat is there um, by them. So they're guessing they're starting the towing right now. So yeah, what a what a turn of events! What a night! This is what we were so. This is what we were all so worried about. And um, I got a message from the other Swedish boat, uh, Josephine, that went into La Coruña. That they, as they were going into La Coruña, they heard like screaming over the a uh, VHF in different uh, languages, and they could only hear like ten orcas. And then they could see, or they could hear something that they were sending out a rescue boat. And they could see the boat and then they could also see a helicopter going out. So it's probably that same pod that has then started um, swimming south. And uh, well now they were here. Yeah, I feel so sorry for them and about the boat and we'll see what the damages will be. Today is my birthday. What a way to start my birthday on. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm glad that we were close to here so that there are two towns and they have uh, good like boat facilities. And I'm glad that the sea was so calm and that the well, weather in general was so calm that we didn't have the sea state that we had out on the Bay of Biscay because that would have been uh, really dangerous also to start a towing operation.
um, yeah, I mean, if, if we would have heard that they wouldn't be able to get towed fast, we would go to them to help them out. But uh, this was definitely the best way because they got, you could see the boat as they were leaving here and they were there in 30 minutes. They were driving in 17 knots and for us it would have taken uh, at least an, an hour and a half to get there. And probably more because it would have been against the, the waves and uh, a much more risky operation for like with two sailboats at night. It's so scary, it's this like uh, ghost in the dark uh, lurking underneath the water. It's so surreal, it really is. It really is surreal. Uh, but we'll help them start the best we can now. We managed to avoid all the fishing buoys on the way into the harbor, and we found a spot tomorrow. Here they come. Everything goes really well, and the weather is perfect. It's dead calm. Heading over to meet Star when they get to the dock here. Been towed now for two hours, I think. Star told us that the towing went really smooth and it costed them 900 euros. breakfast we will go over to star and uh, send down a gopro to see what it looks like under the hull yeah we went to bed 3 30 this morning i just opened a present i filmed the whole thing but uh, accidentally the uh, record button wasn't pushed in so we didn't get anything on tape but uh, i had a present with me from my mom and my sister that I'm from Sweden so it has been lying here in the Four Peak waiting for my birthday and I got some uh, nice goodies really nice soap that I love Swedish brand that I like some uh, body lotion what is this a foot mask it's always good and some Swedish candy <laughs> licorice you know I love salt licorice we're, I think we're almost we're down to one bag of these so now we have another one that was so kind the wind has picked up now and fortunately it's coming on the side so we're being pushed uh, to the dock here the wind is going to be pretty strong today, um, which was even which was also forecasted last night, but um, that changed, and we had we I mean we had no wind at all. Maybe it was a little bit more wind further out from the coast, uh, but today and I think until tomorrow it's going to be pretty pretty windy on the Cape here, Cape Finisterre. This is what it looks like in our closet after the sail. Where are all the clothes? Ah, they are here. <laughs> Everything has fallen out as we've been healing and has stacked up a nice pile here. My clothes are at the bottom. And I have to take all of Johan's clothes out before I can get to mine. Vad vill du ha nu? And some really nice packages. Oh, this is your typical, usual uh, packaging <laughs> style. I call this the Johan style. <laughs> Usually it's with the, the gorilla tape, or what's it called? Silk tape. Sil yeah. Oh, yeah, it feels good that we made the crossing finally. Yeah. We're in Spain. We're so glad that we 
got this wind weather window and that we took it even if it wasn't perfect yeah um now it's the next challenge orcas <laughs> going further south on the coast here Kolla! Mm, I hope I'll smell it. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope they Bathing they... shoes! <laughs> they look big. Uh, it's 37. But I think it does. Well, it's 36. Um, yeah! That's great! <laughs> now, this is really good to have. Did you buy for yourself too? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I yeah, have another one. We are in Spanien! Skål! So good. <laughs> Starting the day with the bubbles, that's nice. Mmm, that was jättegott. And everyone who says, oh, this is not pancakes, you're eating uh, crepes. In Sweden, we call this pancakes. So it's Swedish pancakes, and this is typically how you eat them. You roll them up like this, with the filling inside. We have some whipped cream, we have some Nutella, and some uh, jam, banana. Some people have butter on them, or just a little bit of sugar, fresh berries. But yeah. it's always sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we also call them crepe. Then we do it the French style if we have some savory on it. We're walking over to Star to have a look at their damages. It turns out that it might have been uh, just a fishing net and not an orca attack. Uh, which feels a lot better. Um, so we'll see. Um, Matthias, the skipper on Star, he thought he could see something hanging down from the prop shaft under the boat. So we'll try to film it and hopefully it was just a fishing net. Hola, buenos dias. So I'm just filling in the check in papers here in Spain or. We want a copy of our passports and a little bit of information about our trip. <laughs> the crew of Star welcomed me by singing. So sweet of them regarding their terrible night. <gasps> So me, Kev. And just as Matthias thought, a huge fishing net was wrapped around the propeller. We didn't know how stuck it was, but after some pulling with the bolt hook, we got the whole net off. The propeller and shaft looked good on the outside. But we needed to run the engine to see if there had been any bending of the propeller shaft. Okay, let's get back. Hello, Matthias. So, where are you from? From what? Okay. How does it feel, Matthias? <laughs> it feels a lot better now when uh, we know we don't have to spend uh, the next upcoming weeks here. We can finally focus on uh, our further travels and the uh, safety of everyone else here. Yeah, it feels a lot better now. Yeah, big relief, huh? Big relief, yeah. So we have the the culprit down here. It's a pretty serious net. Big relief, huh, Johanna? 
We were all so happy that we got it sorted out and that this sweet family can continue their sailing adventure. The day ended with dinner in town and dancing to the big concert that was playing. Thank you for watching. We love making videos and with your support we can keep producing on our own terms. If you want to support our production, you can join our Patreon crew. See you next week!